So welcome to 10 Steps to Printing Excel Files Without Losing Your Mind. You should have a handout that looks like this. Same title up there and it's got some fill in the blank stuff. Most of this class is going to be watching me because the mechanics of this are not difficult. I think the concepts are where the difficult things come in. So it's not going to be that much hands-on, but I'm going to try to give you a lot of tips. You may want to try out a few of those along the way, but specifically the practice file that I'm using is just kind of a file I, I just use, and I don't have a copy of that to give to you, so don't sweat it. I think it'll make sense to you, okay? So sometimes printing Excel, can you make you feel like that, right? had somebody just just before this class was saying is this going to be about how you take those files and you got this page but then you got this little bit over here and you got that little bit over there over and over again that's exactly what this is all about now sometimes you feel like this because you work for this guy <laughs> now nobody own up to that but I worked for this guy at one point um, if you look up short man syndrome in the, in, the, uh, in the dictionary, he was there. This was not even in the law firm world. This was in a previous world. But he was very insistent on everything has to be on one page. And I think that's a good thing. But you cannot perform miracles. There was one time I had a spreadsheet. It was retail data. It was three years of retail data by month, quarter, and year. So it ended up being 50 columns. You can't get 50 columns on one page wide. One time, we'll call my short guy that was my boss, we'll call him Fred, not his real name. I came to him and I said, Fred, I said, look, I can't get this on one page. And he looks at me and he goes, just get it on one page. Yes, sir, I will get it on one page. So I did, in fact, get it on one page, and it was reduced to 26% of its regular size. So what I handed him was a page that was one big blob of toner. So there's, I'm going to teach you everything I learned and have learned about squeezing things onto one page. Sometimes you just can't do it, though. Sometimes you have to revisit expectations. So number one tip, and this is your first blank, use skinny margins. And I would recommend you make a note of these margins, and I'm going to show you how to set them just in a minute. Now, a lot of times the question comes up, why can't I just use zero for a margin? Well, the reason you can't use zero for a margin is when the paper physically is being fed through the printer, the printer has to have some space to grab onto it. Unless you work for a magazine, you can't have zero margins. You have to have some margin. So I have found in practice, this is the best balance between getting as much as you can on one page and not getting into trouble. Not having, for instance, the header bleed over into the body of the worksheet, okay? So let me pop over here and show you this one. So here's my worksheet. This has been uh, obfuscated from a real worksheet I found on the web. But this is a real worksheet, maybe similar to some you have done before. So if you notice, it goes column A all the way over here to N. And if you see the dotted lines, the dotted lines indicate where you're going to have page breaks, right? So back to margins. I'm going to go to the Page Layout tab. Now when you're doing printing, nearly everything you're going to set up is going to be on the Page Layout tab. There's going to be a few exceptions, but we'll see as we go through this, it's almost all on the Page Layout tab. So I want to set my margins first. I'm going to click the Margins button and choose Custom Margins. Once I'm here, I'm going to set my margins. Notice it gives me a preview. Also notice when I put in a margin, I can click into each one. 
but it's really quicker to just use the tab key. So if I do 0.5, that's my top, press tab, 0.5 for the bottom, 0.5, 0.5, then notice one more tab gets me to header, 0.25 and 0.25. So that's the margins I recommend. Tip number two, use landscape orientation. That's kind of a no-brainer, but I've seen people that didn't do it. Number three, use the largest paper available. Now most of the time we don't have paper this size, but you work in a law firm. You got legal paper for sure, right? So typically I will go to landscape and then legal size paper. Now here's where the rub comes in. What if you've done all your tricks, legal's not cutting it? Most of the time, and Courtney can kind of correct me on this, but I bet you have the capability in-house of doing 11 by 17, right? Okay, so you could go to 11 by 17. I, most firms don't have the capability to go beyond that, but you may have in-house to even go like poster size. But the moral of the story is, go as large as you have to to keep it from being multiple pages because if you've ever tried to do multiple pages it's a nightmare and sometimes you have to if i was doing something internal and i had to do multiple pages wide maybe if i was doing something for the court and i'm going to show it to a jury there is no way i would go beyond one page wide absolutely no way if i had to go you know outsource it and get really big paper that's what you need to do. Tip number four. Set the print area. Now this is one thing that can really frustrate people because it doesn't have an analog in Word. In Word, you print the whole document or you print the pages you want. Print area is a completely different animal. I think of it as you have this whole big thing. If you, if you remember, you had the columnar pads, the big green books with all the lines in them. It would be like saying, I want just certain columns and certain rows. That's all I want. Or I want the whole big sheet, okay? One or the other. That's what the print area is. And the print area travels with the document. So you may have experienced this before. You get a worksheet in from a client, you just press print, and it prints not what you want, right? That ever happened to anybody? Okay, yeah, the, the print area travels with the document. So let me go over here to my sample document. Right now, there's no print area. So when I go back to here to print, now I'm at 12 pages, right? That's gonna print the whole thing. But if I go back to my page layout tab, and I just select some of this, and I set the print area. Now if I go to print, that's all it's gonna print. So whenever I get a new worksheet, the first thing I do is I set the print area to what I want. So there's a keyboard shortcut that I think a lot of the time will work, and that's just Control A. Control A will select everything until it encounters a blank column or a blank row. So two steps to set the print area. Control A and then print area, set print area. Okay? Now that doesn't always work because sometimes you have blanks in there. Otherwise, you know, you can just scroll. You can scroll over here and scroll down until you get what you need. Another trick I'll show you is that, well, it went too far. If I know that the last cell that I want printed is this one, so that's cell N205, I can come up here to the name bar, click in there, and type A1 colon N205, and that selects the whole thing, selects that area. So you know you select a range with the first cell reference, a colon, and the last cell reference.
questions? Print area makes sense? Okay. All right. Next one. Use print titles for repeating header rows. Why they call this print titles is a mystery to me. In Word, we have repeat header row, right? So you're in a table, you click the checkbox, and that first row or first two or three rows goes on every page in your multi-page table. Same thing here. In this example, first name, last name, age, and salary. If it was 10 pages long, that row repeats on each one. So <clears throat> if I go over here and I look at my worksheet right now, see how on that one, no header. Just the first one has a header. Now I've seen some really interesting workarounds where people will do a manual page break and then copy and paste the first row. You don't have to do that. So right here it says print titles. Now this is a little bit tricky because when this comes up, when I click print title, I see this where it says rows to repeat at top. What you need to do is click in this box and then select the row or rows that you want. See how it puts in dollar one colon dollar one? That means make row one the repeating header. Now one thing that's different about this versus Word. In Word, you always have to include the first row. Not true in Excel. If this had like the firm name up here and I didn't want the firm name but I wanted rows two and three, I can come over here and just select rows two and three. Now they do have to be contiguous, so they do have to be touching each other, but I can select whatever row or rows that I want. And then once you do that, you click OK. And now if we go back into print, we'll see, see that header's on every row. 